So I jump ship in Hong Kong. And I make my way over to Tibet. And I get on as a looper at a course over there in Himalayas. A looper? A looper. You know, a caddy, a looper. Mm. Jack. So I tell him I'm a pro Jack. And who do you think they give me? The Dalai Lama himself. The 12th son of the Lama. The flowing robes, the grace, bald. <sighs> Striking. So I'm on a first tee. What am I giving the driver? He hauls off and whacks one. Big hitter, the Lama. Long. Into a 10,000 foot crevice right at the base of this glacier. Do you know what the Lama says? No. Gunga Galunga. Gunga Gunga la Gunga. So he finished 18. And he's going to stiff me. And I say, hey, Lama, hey, how about a little something, you know, for the effort, you know? And he says, oh, uh, there won't be any money. But when you die on your deathbed, you will receive total consciousness. <laughs> so I got that going for me, which is nice. <laughs> consciousness. It's often portrayed as the last frontier of human understanding. But isn't it really our first and final intellectual trap? There seems to be so much trending interest as an individual in bypassing physical existence to gain access to our origin, whatever we can imagine that to be. It is the ultimate intellectual race to the supposed top of existence. <laughs> Quite funny and very entertaining, at least to me. The problem is that we're trying to do that just for the sake of our isolated self. As we meditate our way out of physical existence and or intellectualize our way into unnecessary debate about what is, could be, or should be, we hurt ourself and everyone around us who is attempting to reconnect with us. Hurt, meaning that we delay a peaceful reunion through a simple remembering of our connection. The more we seek meaning and understanding of life, we are actually delaying the finding of an explanation that's constantly in front of us. The explanation is constantly stimulating and teasing our five senses, but our mind, our intellect, is too caught up in trying to explain it in words, in a linear fashion, and trying to do so lately for release of an ebook or e opinion. Boy. Instead, let us feel connection instead of just thinking about consciousness. The ultimate goal of life is to exist and know it, to experience indiscriminate love through a shared reality by regaining awareness of our connection and origin as one. The game of hide and seek creates the sense of self through initial temporary separation from so-called others, those external to ourself who look, think, and act differently than what resonates within ourself. This is by life's design, and without it, we would never know we exist. The intention of separation and reunification of life is perhaps the most difficult aspect to collectively understand and accept, at least while we are heavily invested in the thinking process. The path to acceptance is found only by feeling the contrast of love's presence or absence, by remaining in the present moment. We remain present by feeling the physical experience of life, rather than predominantly thinking about life. There is a time to think, and then a time to act. Life has become too enamored by individual thought an endless debate over thought. Feeling leads to synthesis, the full inclusion of all life's possibilities and a positive attraction of life into the self. Thinking is analytical and it leads to a disassembly of life, 
biased by a narrow individual experience and set of beliefs. Prejudiced, non-experience. Scrutiny, disbelief, and a negative action to block or push away life from the self. I would like to share with you life's elegant design and breathtaking goal. The time you have left can and should be blissful. What would a life of wonderful experiences deeply imprinted into your body mean to you? Can you imagine anything worse than the stark realization at the end of your life, full of regrets, guilt, and shame, of a life unlived? Far too often, near the end of our life, we awaken to life's design and our failure to participate meaningfully in life. Today should be the first day of the life you know that you were meant to experience. Life is waiting. Life is not complete without you. The ultimate realization is this. You are inherently connected to everything that you witness directly and nothing need be done. There's no path. There's no journey. There's no long, hard work. You're inherently connected and it's just a matter of remembering that connection. Finding and maintaining a reference to the entire whole of existence by looking first down and within and finding a loving, flowing, and connection with this body that comprises you is the first step towards reconnecting with the ultimate body that connects all of society. All love is directed towards the reuniting ultimate self. Realizing that the thinking you, a cellular instance of a next level body, call it humanity, whatever you want. Realizing that the thinking you is a part of the self-realization and that everyone, everything is depending upon you for their own well-being, their own realization of love, their own existing and knowing. This should be the most awe-inspiring realization of your own lifetime. Blessings.